Hey, I want you to make some noise and welcome our church online family real quick. They can hear you. Glad y'all are with us. Grab your Bible. We're going to jump into something brand new called The Rescue. Everybody say The Rescue. The rescue. What would you do if you saw someone drowning? Hopefully you'd jump in and save them. We have a community pool in our neighborhood. Last year in the summer, one day, Amber said, I'm going to take Annabelle up to the pool. Why don't you come hang out with us? And I, I said, i got to wrap up some work. I'll meet you just in a few minutes. Y'all go on up there. And they went on up, started swimming, having fun. I wasn't going to get in the water. I was just in my clothes. I was just going to sit by the pool, hang out with my family a little bit. And so about 20 minutes later, I go up to the community pool. I'm walking in the gate. And to my left, I see this woman sitting on a lounge chair in her phone. She has no idea where she is. She's just stuck in the phone. I thought, that's interesting. I turn to my right. I start walking. I look, and I see my wife. And she says, Zach, get her. And I look in the pool, and there's a little girl going, because something most people don't realize about drowning is Hollywood depicts it incorrectly. There's no noise when somebody drowns. It's completely silent. So in my clothes, I jumped in the pool, grabbed the little girl, scooped her up, got her to the side, out of the water. The woman on the phone realizes what's happening, hops up, comes running over and says, oh my gosh, what happened? Now, I wanted to push her into the pool. <laughs> And say, you weren't watching. She almost drowned. I just said she was in trouble, so I, I got her out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I had no idea. And I didn't really think anything of it until I sat down to relax. I was like, wow, that's cool. I just rescued somebody. That was awesome. When I was in high school, I worked at a water park in Lubbock, Texas for about three years. And every year, they would have boys club day. And parents would drop their kids off, and a lot of these kids had no idea how to swim. And, and just on that one day in the water park, it was pretty normal for them to do over 100 rescues. I also worked at an ER in an overnight shift for a couple of years. And so needless to say, I've been around a lot of rescue. Did you know Christianity is all about God giving us the opportunity to be rescued? That Bible that you're holding, by the way, if you don't have a Bible, just ask us at the hub after church. We want to give you one. But that Bible that you're holding, it, it is a rescue guide cover to cover. Rescue is the, the central theme of the Bible. This idea that God did not leave us to drown, to sink, or to swim in our own sin, in our own depravity, but he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to rescue us. Amen? He sent his only son to live a perfect life, to die a sacrificial death, and then to resurrect from the grave, to conquer our sin, to conquer death itself, and to give us the eternal hope of heaven. I want to take you to Galatians chapter 1. It says that Jesus gave his life, gave his life for our sins. Jesus is the ultimate life ring. He's the ultimate rescuer. He gave his life for our sins just as God our Father planned in order to what, church? To rescue us, to rescue us from this evil world in which we live. So rescue is what God's all about. Rescue is what the Bible's all about. Rescue is what church is supposed to be all about. And rescue is what Christians are supposed to be all about. And then Jesus gave us this mandate, this mission there's no doubt about it. We're called to this, that the moment you say, hey, I accept the love, the grace, the forgiveness, the salvation found in the cross of Christ, that, that you are a part of this mission. He said in Matthew 28, therefore, go. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this. As you go, as you rescue, as you make disciples, as you teach them and grow them, I'm with you. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. I want to talk about rescue for a few weeks because rescue is the main thing. Rescue is the main thing. But in church, for some reason, it, it's so easy to forget the main thing. Let's just understand this. The main thing 
is rescuing people from hell. Amen? We sling the ring. That's what we do. Jesus Christ is the ring. He's the life ring. He's the great rescuer. And as Christ followers, every day we carry the gospel and we sling the ring to a drowning world. We get to be involved in rescues. Somebody say rescue. Somebody say sling the ring. The main thing is we sling the ring. Can I tell you a sad thing? A sad thing is that so many Christians don't do that. So many Christians treat church and faith like, like they're sitting on a cruise ship. I got my ticket. I ain't going to hell. I'm going to be in heaven, and I'm just going to chill on the boat and enjoy this Christian life. I'm going to read my book. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat some good meals. I'm going to go to some good shows. And I'm just going to live it up. Ah. Sitting in the morning sun. Come on, somebody. I'll be sitting when the evening comes. Okay, I don't appreciate my singing enough. I love Otis. Okay. There's so many Christians. Can I just tell you? No, 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 no. That's, that's not what we're called to do. A cruise ship Christian, I would argue, might not even be a Christian. We're called to be Coast Guard Christians. Church is a lot more like a Coast Guard unit than it is a cruise ship. And we have a culture in crisis. I don't know if you've noticed that. Like everything is inverted and perverted. What's right is wrong. What's wrong is right. That's the world that we live in. And this world needs us to make rescues more than ever. And as Christians, man, let's not forget, we actually have the only thing that works. Jesus said he is what? The way, the truth, the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. There's no other way to receive eternal life. There's no other way to be forgiven from your sins. We're living in this upside-down world that needs us more than ever, I'd say, to <laughs> sling the ring, to make radical rescues. I want to invite you over the next few weeks and help you and train you a little bit to be a part of God's search and rescue team called the church. And I want to point out that the first church, our model, the book of Acts, they were not a cruise ship church. I don't know if you picked up on it. I don't know if you've ever read the book of Acts. They were more like a Coast Guard church. Hey, listen to just a couple scriptures real quick describing the, ver the very first church. Acts chapter 12, verse 24, the word of God increased and multiplied. Acts 13, 49, the word of the Lord is spreading throughout the whole region. Acts 19, 20, so the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily. And I could read and read and read about how God's church was growing and how there was rescue after rescue after rescue after rescue. We could look at the very first church service ever on the, the southern steps of the temple, first church service in, in Christian history where 3,000 people were saved and baptized in one day, one sermon, one church service. The church is all about rescue. First church wasn't a cruise ship church, and we are not a cruise ship church. We're not a bunch of people sitting on the deck, getting fat and happy, just eating all the time. No, no, no. We're a Coast Guard church living for the mission of rescue, even when it's tough, even when we accumulate some battle scars in the middle of the mission. Amen, somebody? And so I just want to challenge you and also just maybe remind you, or, or maybe you didn't know this and you're learning it for the first time, I, I want you to know that if you're a Christ follower, you carry the ring every day, all day. Like if you have surrendered and submitted to Jesus Christ, you're carrying this. You're carrying the gospel. You're carrying the truth that the world needs. But are you being obedient? Are you slinging the ring when God tells you to? when the Holy Spirit presents you with the opportunity. Because Coast Guard Christians are all about that. Coast Guard Christians sling the ring. They're involved in rescues. They, they pluck people from hell up to heaven. Just like you saw in that Coast Guard video. They're pulling the guy out of the water. But again, the problem is so many Christians won't do this. 
So many Christians won't sling the ring. Now, why? I thought about this this week. Why? And man, I made a list of a hundred reasons. It was pretty easy. So many reasons to not do that, right? So many reasons we don't share Christ. So many reasons we don't sling the ring. But here's kind of the, the big ones. The big ones, I think. Cruise ship Christians make rescuses, not rescues. Excuses to not rescue somebody, uh, a rescue. You ready? First, safety. Safety. Like we're scared. We have some, some fear. We're, square, we're scared. What, what, if I, what if I don't say the right words? What if they ask a question I can't answer? What if they know more than me? Some of us are, are paralyzed by the thought of being disliked. It's a safety thing. We don't want to sling the ring. What if, what if it makes them upset? What if they don't like me? What if I'm marginalized? What if I'm laughed at? What if I'm openly mocked? What if they call me Ned Flanders? Like, what, what, what if, what if, what if, what if? And, and I just want to challenge you and encourage you and maybe even get in your face a tiny bit if I need to, and you know that, if that's you, that, that Jesus spilled his blood on a cross for you and we're scared to sling the ring? Come on, let's bring courage back to Christianity. Let's bring courage back. Y'all are quiet today. Okay, another rescue. I thought of this one. This one's big. Political correctness. Political correctness. Over the years, Christians have gotten into this place where it's like, well, it's not, con- it's not appropriate. It's not politically correct to share your faith. Hey, listen, Jesus never promised popularity for you basing your life on his teachings. He, he never promised that. In fact, he kind of promised the opposite. In Mark 8, he said, if anyone's ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, I will be ashamed of them. And then Paul said in Romans 1, 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. We, we can't worry about being politically correct if someone is drowning and this world's drowning. I thought of apathy. That's a big rescue. It's sad, but it's got to be addressed. It's got to be dealt with. Some Christians, if we're being totally honest, really don't care about drowning people. Oh, if you saw the little girl in the pool, you would jump in all day long. But there are people drowning spiritually, dying an eternal death going to hell, and so many Christians are too apathetic to jump into the water of this world and pluck people from the gates of hell. Think about that. Think about how twisted that kind of apathy is. I would actually question if you don't care about drowning people whether or not you're actually a Jesus follower. I would question that. I would question if you're actually a Jesus follower, if, if you don't pray for drowning people in your neighborhood and in your workplace, if, if you don't care one bit if they accept Jesus and go to heaven or not, I would question, are you even a Christian? I really would. I would. I'd have that conversation all day long. When was the last time you invited somebody that's drowning into your home or into your church? When, when was the last time you had a conversation with somebody that doesn't know Christ about Christ? About how you were drowning too one day, but then Christ rescued you because somebody in church said, I'll sling the ring. And I think that what happens is we get apathetic because it, we just get into this mode. It's easy to forget church is all about rescue. And, and we get into this mode where it's like we're focused on everything Jesus can do for me And we forget about all the things Jesus commanded us to do for his kingdom. Here's another rescue, knowledge. Man, we use knowledge as as such an excuse. I'm just here to to learn more. I'm in a season of growing. I need to learn first. Okay, of course you need to learn. Of course you need to grow. Nobody's saying you don't need to grow in your own faith. That's part of it. I am just saying that biblically, real spiritual growth isn't just grow, 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 grow. It's also go, 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 go. And that one of the best ways you grow, grow, grow is by going and slinging the ring and making rescues. I'd argue that the very best way to grow spiritually is to get involved in rescuing people. 
Man, it will speed up your spiritual growth. And man, there's so many more. One other I thought of, I just want to go deeper. You hear that one in church. I just want to go deeper. Okay, listen, that's great. You should want to go deeper. If you're a Jesus follower, like the whole point of the rest of your life is to go deeper and deeper and deeper. That's why we have theology courses. We have an apologetics course. We have small groups. I believe that our preaching is deep. If you'll lean into it and what the Holy Spirit is saying to you, we provide a digging deeper guide every week for the sermon in the Revolution Church app where you can click it. You can dive a little bit deeper. You should want to go deeper, but here's what I know about deep water. It's the only part of the pool where rescues happen. And so if there are no rescues happening in your life, can I just say, maybe you're in the shallow end. If there's no rescues, you're probably in the shallow water. You might think you're deep, but I think deep is when there are rescues. Lots of rescuses out there that people use to not have to sling the ring. But a healthy church, a healthy Jesus follower says, no, 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 this world's drowning. We don't know how many how many days they have, how many hours they have, how many minutes they have. We got to sling the ring. We got to understand the mission. Jesus is the the rescuer. Jesus is the life ring. And, And by the way, the only thing Jesus ever built, I don't know if you know it, is the local church. So I'm going to sling this out. Stand up, Scott, Ralph, come here for a second. I'm going to sling the ring. I'll sling the rope out to my man, Ralph, hand the other end to Scott. See, we are tethered, the church, to Jesus, the ring. And we're engaged, pull gentlemen, in this, yeah, I thought I was stronger than both (laughs) y'all. Thanks for not pulling me off the stage. You guys can sit down. We're engaged in this this spiritual battle, this spiritual game of of constant tug-of-war where we're literally pulling people in who are drowning, pulling them in from the grip and the grasp of hell. Do you ever think about that? Why are people drowning? Why is the world so inverted and perverted? Why is is it true that what's right is wrong today and what's wrong is right? Why is that all true? Because hell has such a tight grip on people's lives. That should make you just want to get out there and, and rescue more than ever. We pull in drowning people. That's why it's important for us to hold that rope. 2 Timothy chapter 4 says, As for you, always be sober-minded. Endure suffering. And look at this. Do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. In Philemon 1.6, I'm praying that you will put into action, wow, the generosity that comes from your faith. As you understand, not after you understand, not after you learn enough, not one day in the future, no, right now, as you understand and experience all the good things we have in Christ. The the scriptures are telling us, church, that you really begin to fully understand and experience the, the power of the gospel when you put the gospel into action in and through your life, and that there's nothing that will grow your faith quite like what? Sling in the ring and being a part of rescuing people far from the Lord. Now, y'all know that I love to fish. I try to fish every week. It's, it's just one of my favorite things to do. And me and my fishing buddies have this little saying. We say, the tug is the drug. <laughs> Everybody say, the tug is the drug. the drug. You know why we say that? Because there's just nothing like pulling in a fish. And when you catch one, you're like, I want to do that again. It's just so much fun. And the same is true with rescuing people far from the Lord. Man, there is just nothing like it. When you are a part of a rescue, the tug is the drug. I believe that's one of the reasons our church is growing. Because we are a rescue church. And people see people getting baptized. And they see people coming to the Lord. And they're like, the tug is the drug. I want to be a part of that. I want to see that happen again. Or, hey, you have a friend a family member, a child, your own spouse. They don't know the Lord. Don't you want to see this happen in their life? The tug is a drug. The tug is a drug. 
This might not excite you right now, but I'm telling you two things. One, if it doesn't excite you right now, I would question if you're even a Jesus follower. And two, if you'll get involved in rescues, it will fire you up and grow your faith unlike anything else. The tug is the drug. There's nothing like being active and sharing your faith in Christ and seeing people rescued. So how? I, I want to I wrap up by saying how? Because Easter's on the horizon. I don't know if you know. Easter's almost here. How? How can we be active in sharing our faith? The rest of the sermon today is a workshop. You ready? Okay, number one, you got this little blue sheet of paper? I want you to get it in your hand. Number one is remember, and I would say even write, your rescue story. Now, I wanted to give you this so that this isn't just a sermon point that you hear and you go, amen. That's good, Pastor. <laughs> because that's the last thing that any of us needs. Do you know your rescue story? Have you thought through it? Have you ever uh, written it out? I want you to actually take this sheet home and write your rescue story. Or if you're like, I don't really write that good. There's a QR code. You can do the, you can do the form online, okay? I, I don't know if I'm allowed to give you all homework, but I'm giving you homework. Yeah, Is that allowed? I'm giving homework. Remember your rescue story. Remember what it was like to be drowning. Remember what it was like to have no hope. Remember what it was like to have no spiritual family. Remember what it was like to not know what would happen if you were to die that very day. Remember being so freaked out about every little thing in, in life. And hey, none of us are perfect. We're, we're still in process people, but, but write your story. Write it in normal terms, okay, that people can understand. You don't need to try to use big Christian words. <laughs> normal, normal language, okay? Write it on like a seventh or eighth grade level, all right? Just write your story out. Who, who took care of slinging the ring to you? Do you remember who that was? What did that feel like? How did it happen? How, how did you respond? And what is your life like now? What has God done through the gospel, through his family, through his word, through his Holy Spirit, through Christian brothers and sisters to, to radically change your life? Now, some of you right now, you're going, I'm going to write my story down. It's kind of boring. That's a lie from the pit of hell. There's no such thing as a boring rescue story. No such thing. Every single rescue story is incredible, it's important, and if you think about what it takes for us to be rescued from ourselves and from hell, an absolute miracle. So write your rescue story, remember it. I want you to bring this back. It's homework. Everybody say, I got it. Bring it back, drop it in one of the boxes, or drop it at the hub, or hand it to a staff member, because here's what we have learned about stories. Stories of rescue always lead to more rescue. And here's what you may not know about your story. Your story is the most powerful thing that you have to share the gospel with other people. You know why? You're the only authority on your rescue story. And people can argue with what this Bible verse says or whether they believe in God or not or blah, blah, blah. But they can't argue with your personal experience of being rescued by the Lord Jesus People can't argue with the fact that the church said, I'll sling the ring. And then when you grabbed on to Jesus Christ, your life was radically changed. Make sure you carry that story all the time. Okay, number two, pray high-risk prayers. Pray high-risk prayers. Let me explain. Two different things. First, I just want to encourage you to begin to pray with people in public on the spot. This is something that a lot of Christians don't do. And it's one of the most powerful things you can do to, to see rescue happen. You're like, I don't even know how, how that would work. I, I need some ideas here, Pastor. Okay, here's an idea. Next time you go to a restaurant, when the waiter or the waitress brings your food, and they always say what? Is there anything else you need? You just say this. No, but we're about to pray for our meal. Is there a way we could pray for you? We do this all the time in our family. And most of the time, 
they're going through something. And they'll share it. And I'll say, just come here. Let's just pray real quick. Jesus, thank you for the food and thank you for it. And then I'll launch into a prayer praying for them. Man, I just gave you all a freebie. You can do it every single time you go to a restaurant. Okay? And then that'll start to grow your confidence a little bit. It'll start to grow your faith a little bit. You'll start to get fired up. The tug is the drug. You'll get fired up about seeing rescues. And then a coworker will share something with you. A friend, a neighbor. Hey, do you mind if I just pray for you right now? I think for too long God's church has done this. I'll pray for you. And there's no power in that. Because 80% of the time we don't pray for them. We forget. Pray out loud for people on the spot. High risk prayers. What's the worst thing they can do? Worst thing they can do is say, no, I'm good. Okay, have a good day. That's the worst thing. That's not bad at all. You can do that, church. Everybody say, I can do that. Okay, and then the second idea here on high-risk prayers is just to kind of have like a rescue list, an ongoing rescue list, an ongoing list of people that don't know the Lord, that the Lord has placed in your life. Man, you've got to understand that God has placed certain people in your life, and I will never encounter them. My man Renee here, he goes and works out at this, this gym in town that I don't go to. He sees lost people I will never see. He has friends I will never meet. And if, Renee, you don't sling the ring to them, this preacher isn't going to do it. He has no opportunity to do it. This church might not even get to do it. But you, a part of the church, can do it. My friend Garrick over here, he, he, he works down in Lavernia. Is that right? And he meets people and sees people and has clients and, and friends and coworkers that you and I will never meet, will never know their names. He has opportunity we will never have. My friend Kelsey over here, she, she works for the city of Cibolo, is that right? And, and she knows people there at the city, and she meets residents and, and deals with business owners that we will never meet, but she'll meet them, and she can sling the ring. And God has you set up in the exact same way. There are people in your life, you're the only one. You are literally their only opportunity for rescue. Pray some high-risk prayers. You should have this list all the time. Hmm, I'm praying for this person, this person, this, because I don't know if they know the Lord. I don't know if they know the Lord. In fact, I wanna, let's make a rescue list right now. Let's do it right now. Grab these little invite cards, okay? We're going to make an Easter rescue list together right now. Who do you know that doesn't have a church and you're not sure if they know the Lord. That's who these cards go to. This week. You have seven days. I'm giving double homework. You're going to share your story. You're going to go for the people on the rescue list. You're going to make a personal invitation. Hey, hey, Garrick, I don't, man, we've lived next door for so long. I never asked you. Do you have a church? You don't. We go to this awesome church. Would you consider coming at Easter? I just want to give you this card. It's got all the times and everything. Which, which, you tell me which service, and I'll meet you there, and we'll sit together. Man, that would be an awesome opportunity for rescue. Because here's what I promise you. If you're not ready to sling the ring yet, okay, don't forget the whole sermon, all right? I believe you need to start slinging the ring immediately. But if there's some hesitation or something or it doesn't feel right, get them to church. We're going to sling the ring. I promise you that. Together they walk in this building, the ling shall <laughs> the ling, the, I got too many w rhyming words in this sermon. <laughs> the ring shall sling. There we go. All right. It's going to happen. So I think you got like five of these or so, five people this week. And then here's the thing. I'm going to give you five more next week. Okay. But who are you going for this week? There's your rescue list. High risk prayers where you pray, God, would you give me opportunity to sling the ring to this person. God, would you give me opportunity to be involved in rescue? God, would you start to, start to soften their hearts so that they'll respond to the gospel? Remember and write your rescue story. Pray high-risk prayers. Number three, we've got to live and give generously. Live and give generously. I was reading recently, Jerry Jones has a yacht that costs $250 million dollars. 
$250 million. But I've never heard anybody say, Jerry Jones just wants my money. All Jerry Jones and the Cowboys care about is money, 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 money. Nobody says that about the Cowboys, but people say it about church all the time. So interesting. And I was reading further, and I found out, do you know how much it costs Jerry just to own and operate and store his yacht? It costs him 10% of the cost of the yacht. 10%, 10%, 10%. That sounds familiar. 10%, 10%. Okay, anyway. Some of you get that. Some of you don't get it. It's okay. (laughs) Then I was reading one article. Check this out. I learned this week that the average Coast Guard rescue is $10,000 per hour. And the average rescue is four hours. So just like a normal, average, somewhat simple rescue for the Coast Guard, $40,000. What I'm trying to get you to see, church, is that if there's rescue, there's a cost. That rescue takes resources. Takes resources. Now, since we're talking about giving, I want to give you a super quick update, okay? Um, Most of you know we own property on 3009. And we have been working to get some initial bids from some different contractors. I'm excited to say we finally got an initial bid. It is, uh, it is, it is tight, 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 if you know what I'm saying. Have you noticed costs are not going down? Everybody's like, next month we'll start going down. No, they will not. <laughs> costs are not going down for years. So what we believe is that it's time to move forward with as much intensity, as ferociously as we possibly can, okay? We're going to have to go all in to make this thing happen. All in. So we're going to start something the week after Easter called All In. All In. Because we just believe if God can raise his son from the dead, we could raise our generosity so we can raise a building in order to raise more people to faith in Jesus Christ. Y'all get ready to go all in. We have to live and give Generous lives, rescue takes resources. Number four is just the title of the sermon, of course, that I've been saying all along. Number four is sling the ring. Sling the ring. I don't know how else to say it other than at some point. Man, you just got to go for it. Sling the ring. Invite people. Present the gospel. Now, we're going to be working on this, like I said, and I'm really excited about Easter. I'm going to do... I'm going to do something. I don't know if it's smart or not. I'm going to do something on Easter Sunday where we are going to train you how to sling the ring by just presenting the gospel to all of the guests that are going to be here on Easter, because that's what it's all about anyway, amen, to the room in a very creative way that you could do on a napkin, a sheet of paper, a pen on the palm of your hand. We're going to literally equip you to sling the ring. And by the way, speaking of Easter, let's talk about Easter for a second, because Easter's coming, and the goal at Easter is to fill every single seat with a soul. I knew it. This church is just about numbers. No, but you can't rescue an empty seat. I learned that. You can only rescue a soul sitting in an empty seat. Amen? So the goal is to get people here who need to be rescued, okay? So you got the invite cards. You got your hit list, all right? You got your... Share your story sheet. Uh Uh-oh, triple homework. I made you some door hangers. I'm so pumped about this. We haven't done this in years. I don't know how many you got, but I want you to go plaster your own neighborhood. Go plaster your neighborhood. They have the, the signs on their door that say they don't like people coming to their door. Be sneaky. I don't know what to tell you, all right? Our whole neighborhood has that sign right at the front of the, the neighborhood, okay? Just... Let's go put these on doors. I'm going to give you some more of these next week. We're going to sling the ring. We're going to make the invite. Uh, I also have yard signs, okay? And you can take one today. Please don't take two. Just take one. You put it up kind of close to your house like this. By the way, people have told me in the past, we're not allowed to do that in our neighborhood with our HOA. It's actually illegal in the state of Texas for an HOA to tell a homeowner that they can't put up a religious sign. So don't be confused. You are allowed to put one of these up. And then the week after Easter, take it down. Don't leave it up till next Easter. That's ghetto. (laughs) That doesn't help us, okay? So on your way out, if you would put one of these in your yard, you can grab one. There's some at the front. There's also some uh, in the back of the room, by the door, and by the cameras back there, okay? So we're going all in, church. 
We're going all in for rescue this Easter. A couple other things you can do for Easter. Um, one, arrive early. Two, park far in the lots across the street and ride the golf cart, which is why you need to arrive early. Okay, early is not after the second song. Early is 20 minutes before the first song. Okay, and look at the Easter times. There's a change. I don't know if you see it. And this is actually going to be a permanent change that will stay in place after Easter. 8.45, 10, 11.30, and 1. If you're here for all four services, you will see why we need to space the services out just a little bit more. Okay? So starting Easter Sunday, here's here's your new times. You guys now come to church at 8.45 is the start time, but you get here at 8.25. Right? Right? Come on. Y'all, y'all. You can come 20 minutes early for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Yes, I used his name. Okay. Other things for Easter. Serve a service, sit a service. Or serve two services and sit a service. And when you sit a service, be enthusiastic. Lift your hands. Be responsive in worship and during the message. Just a few people in the room like that can change the atmosphere of the whole entire room and help people lift their hearts heavenward. Sling the ring. And then last, number five, and this is really just for certain people, but again, you know if I'm talking to you. Join God's search and rescue team, the local church. I didn't say just get on the boat. Join it. Sign up for the spiritual Coast Guard. Become a part of the church. We have a thing twice a month called Starting Point. And if you'll come to Starting Point, you'll be given the opportunity to learn all about the history of our church. It's, it's less than an hour. It takes almost zero time. And you're, you're given an opportunity to, to join this rescue society called Revolution Church. You're given a chance to become a member and, and to see what membership means here at Revolution Church, to, to get some of the story, and, and then to join the dream team. The people really slinging the ring are the dream team people really making the rescues are the the dream team. Can we just make some noise for our church and the dream team? Church, I want you to know, last week we crossed 1,500 people baptized. That's a church that slings the ring. We've had over 3,800 people rescued here at Revolution Church from the pit of hell. 3,800 people. Join God's search and rescue. Get on a dream team. Do it before Easter when your church needs you. Do it before Easter. You know what Jesus said to the disciples? He took them to pray with them. He said, would you sit with me and pray? They kept falling asleep. They weren't doing nothing. And he said this, and I wonder if I could just say this to you. He said, guys, could you not tarry with me for one more hour? And some people go to church and they're like, So wait, I come to church for an hour, two Sundays a month. Are you telling me you want me to come for two hours every Sunday? Yes, I'm telling you that. Sit a service, service, service every single week. Could you not tarry one more hour for the Lord? You've got one of these connection cards. If you're ready to go all in, you're ready to join this church, you're ready to say, sign me up for search and rescue. I want you to fill this card out. Check the box that says starting point and the box that says dream team. And then go by the hub and give them that card. And we're going to begin the process of getting you connected to the church. Why? Because there's a culture in crisis, y'all. There are people drowning and Christians hold the only hope of rescue. We, we hold the only lifeline, and we've got to fix our focus, I believe more than ever, on our God-given duty to save lost, drowning people, to sling the ring. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've given us the opportunity to be a part of your search and rescue team, the local church. God, those of us in the room who have been rescued, help us never to forget our story. Help us never to be apathetic. Help us never to be too scared to to sling the ring. Help us to never use knowledge or spiritual growth or going deeper as an excuse because there are no excuses. You have called us, you have commanded us, and you have empowered us. 
So God, I guess the only thing left to pray is, please use us. Please use us. And as you talk to God about the people that need to be rescued in your life right now, the steps you need to take right now. Listen, if you're not a Christ follower, I'll say it one more time. Christianity is all about how God has given us an opportunity to be rescued. Your creator, God, he, he didn't leave you to sink and to drown in your own sin. No, in his great love, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to live perfectly, to die sacrificially, to resurrect, giving you victory over the grave, giving you forgiveness from your sin, offering you the eternal hope of heaven. And you can say yes to that today. You can grab onto the ring, King Jesus. It just takes a moment of surrender, a moment of submission to him as Lord, a moment of confession and repentance of your sin, the fact that you are drowning. It just takes a yes, a yes to Jesus. So if that's you, pray like this. Let's all pray together and tell God that you're ready to grab onto the ring. Say, Heavenly Father, I surrender. I need rescue. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that you rescued me. Thank you for your cross, for the resurrection. I confess my sin. I repent from my sin. And I trust you, God. Make me brand new. Teach me. Change me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's make some noise for what God's doing. Isn't he good? Come on.